Hello, my name is Mark Dudash and I am an application engineer from NI. In this video tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create an UHD cross compilation for Atos embedded devices. During this tutorial, I will use an E3 tile device in an Ubuntu 20.4 environment in VirtualBox running on a PXI controller. During the tutorial, I will use this application node from Atos. You can find a link to it in the description and links to all the other pages mentioned in this video. As a first step, I will update the embedded Linux on the micro SD card of the device. This is a step I will do from Windows. However, this tutorial shows the steps on how to do this in Linux as well. So the first thing I will do is eject the micro SD card from the device and plug it into the SD card reader on my Windows PC. Then I will go to this web page and download the SD image file appropriate for my device. For the E310, the SG version of this image file is dependent on your product number. For the E312, SG3 should be used. For E320 devices, there are separate image files. I will create the disk image with the Win32 Disk Imager application, which is downloadable for free from its home page. After downloading and unzipping the image file, select the SD image and the drive for the SD card. After all is set up, press Write to begin writing the SD card. This usually takes a couple of minutes to finish. After the SD card was written, I safely remove it from the PC and plug it into the SD card slot of the E312. Then turn the device on. For these next steps, it is important to connect both the micro USB serial connector and the Ethernet connector to the PC, in my case PXI controller, with suitable cables. Open up a terminal window and navigate to the slash dev folder. Looking at the contents of the folder, there should be a file named ttyusb0 or something similar. We can use the screen application to log into the E312 using serial connection. The last number I typed is the baud rate. Press on enter on this prompt. The username for the login is root and by default it is without a password. Before delving into the cross compilation part, let's do a couple of quick checks first. Type UHD find devices and note that we already have UHD 4.1.0.1 installed on this device and it recognizes the E312. What one will achieve with cross compilation is having another version of the UHD driver installed with added examples and modifiable source code for an easier and quicker development since the compilation is done on a more powerful PC rather than on the USRP device itself. The first thing I need to do on the embedded OS is to assign an IP address to it so I can later use SSH to connect to it and mount file systems. Let's start this by typing if config and seeing that S0 does not have a fixed init address. Navigate to slash etc slash network and create the file interfaces using Vim. To go to edit mode in Vim, press the escape button and then I. As you can see, it says insert on the bottom. Add these lines for the loopback interface. Then for add zero, add the following. Then 
This is of course an example IP that will be used for the rest of this tutorial. Press escape and type colon wq to save the file and exit vim. Typing if config will not yield any changes yet, we need to restart networking first. Achieve this by using the if up add zero command. Let's test the SSH connection now. I am opening up a new terminal tab and type ssh root at and the IP address. The connection is established, so I can move on to download the SDK file from the Atus page shown earlier. Since I already did this prior, the zip is in my downloads folder. Unzip the .sh file and from here follow the instructions from this tutorial from the installing SDK step. I will now follow along this tutorial, however, instead of installing this SDK file, I will execute the recently downloaded one. I will open up a terminal here. Execute the SDK file using sh. I need to enter the target directory for the install. For that, I will use the home directory slash prefix folder. This part takes a while, so I will cut the video now. After the installation finished, I will uh, check the prefix folder. and see the contents of it. So I can see that everything is uh, is all done. And I will use the source command to set the uh, environment uh, variables. And after it is done, uh, I will uh, check the result of this with the following command. And uh, since, since all is correct, uh, I will uh, I will move on to, to the next part uh, in the tutorial that is uh, actually compiling and installing the UHD. Uh, so now I will uh, create the SRC folder and uh, step into it. And uh, from here I will use uh, this uh, git clone command uh, to, uh, to clone the uh, UHD repository. This is something that is actually taking a bit of time, so uh, I will cut the video now. So after the cloning uh, is done, I will step into the UHD slash host folder and into this folder I will uh, create the build folder step into it and from the tutorial copy the uh, following CMake command and I will now just insert it and run it this is actually a phase where uh, you can you can meet some problems with the dependencies, but after installing them, uh, all should work fine. And the uh, next step to, to do the compilation is to use the make command. Now this is something that uh, even could take hours depending on your PC. Um, so I will return once it's finished. Now that the compilation has finished, 
I will move on uh, with the install command. Just copy paste it here and press enter. This is usually uh, a faster process than, uh, than the compilation. And after it's finished, I can move on to run the new UHD install via uh, SSHFS. So what I'm going to do now is uh, log in to the USRP device using SSH. And uh, since we are in the root folder, I can now create the user folder as the tutorial guides and use the sshfs command to connect the my my pc with with this address and then the username the i will mount the prefix uh, folder to the to the freshly created user folder on the device And after it's done, I will step into the user folder and see that all of the contents are, are here. And what I'm going to do next is, is create the set env file on the, on the USRP device using Vim. I will just copy paste it and uh, on the first line I will set up the path to be to be correct and after that I will use the WQ uh, to exit Vim running which UHD find devices I can see that uh, it is still uh, trying to execute uh, this command from the per user, per bin folder. Uh, now, uh, after applying the freshly created environment variables, if I run this command again, it is now trying to uh, launch this application from the uh, home root user folder. And if I if I type in UHD find devices, you can see that uh, this is UHD 4.2 now, so so the latest version. After finishing the cross compilation, let me show you um, an example uh, to to showcase what uh, what we done. So I will navigate to on the USRP device to the user lib. UHD and examples folder. As you can see, there are a uh, lot of examples here. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate is the RS ASCII art uh, DFT. So it will basically um, create a FFT uh, with uh, center frequency one gigahertz and with the IQ rate. Uh, one mega samples per second on on one of the TX channels. Well, sorry, RX channels. So nothing is seen here, but uh, using Shift D, I can uh, increase the dynamic range. So so I can see that uh, basically what I have uh, around one gigahertz uh, is 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 noise currently on the device. And uh, if we're done playing with this application, uh, we can quit by uh, typing Enter or basically any key. So this is the end of the tutorial. Thanks uh, for watching and uh, 
I wish you good luck with your USRP embedded projects.